uh, all this over here into order. I just want to state that if you do not live inside the city limits of Talking Rock, it does not affect you and it really doesn't really doesn't have a voice. Uh, I see a lot of y'all that I believe that does not live in Talking Rock. So, uh, Jeff, how does that work as far as them voicing their opinion? Anybody can voice their opinion, but obviously you can take into account what you want to take into account. Right. So, and like I say, I mean, you can voice it, but, you know, like I say, uh, we're only going to listen to any uh, town resident. Okay? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this hearing is on uh, uh, Shadow Creek. Uh, Audrey and Kristen and uh, uh, Steve uh, wanting to have a variance uh, to have mixed use, which it is presently uh, C3 commercial. Uh, and that's the county zoning, that's not really our zoning. It's, uh, uh, but anyway, uh, mixed use to uh, commercial residential. So, uh, anybody uh, from the public have any comments? You'd let the applicant speak first. Okay. Mr. Mayor, um, Town Council, I'm Sherry Stoney and I represent uh, Steve and Audrey. Um, they have applied for this variance because they have lived in this uh, building before. When they first bought the building in 2012, they began living in there. Um, they had a chance to live on Mr. Lewis's parents' farm and did that for a little while. But they're back and they want to go back to living on their property with their animals, um, be able to make the repairs that um, the property needs. Obviously, some of the materials are not, you can't get all the historic materials anymore, but to make similar repairs as best that they can. Um, I believe the ordinance, um, the statute that allows you to change the ordinance seems to have been followed correctly. It was published in the newspaper. It was, um, a hearing was held and everything was changed. However, changing it to a historic property uh, comes under an entirely different statute, and there are more rules than there are for just changing your ordinance. Um, give me one second, I've got the, the rules. May I approach? Yeah. Okay, you want to pass uh, this around? If you, you want to pass it around. Okay, I'll do that. The historical statute for Georgia comes on the 44-10-26. There's some extra hoops that have to be jumped through. Um, and not having subpoenaed anything from the town, um, it's possible some of these hoops were jumped through. The first one in, is A1, any ordinance designating any property as a historic property or any district as a historical district shall require that the designated property or district be shown on the official zoning map of the county or municipality. And I believe that was done. Um, okay, I believe number two, May, partially may have been done. Any ordinance designated any property as historic property shall describe each property to be designated, shall set forth the name or names of the owner or owners of the property, and shall require that a certificate of appropriateness be obtained from the Historic Preservation Commission prior to any material change in appearance of the designated property. So that just basically means that once it's historic, um, nothing can be changed. Any ordinance designating any historic district shall include a description of the boundaries. And I believe that B is probably where we need to be going. No ordinance designating any property as a historic property and no ordinance designating any district as a historic district nor any amendments they too may be adopted by the local government body nor may any property be accepted or acquired as historic property by the local governing body until the following procedural steps have been taken. Number one. The Commission shall make or cause to be made an investigation 
and shall report on the historic, cultural, agricultural, or aesthetic significance each place, district, site, building, structure, or work of art proposed for designation or acquisition. This report shall be submitted to the Division of Historic Preservation of the, Na of the Department of Natural Resources or its successor. Now, I have no idea whether or not that was done. Because, like I said, I haven't subpoenaed anything from the town. However, number two, the commission and the local governing body shall hold a public hearing on the proposed ordinance. Notice of the hearing shall be published at least three times in the principal newspaper of general circulation within the municipality or county in which the property or properties to be designated or acquired or located. That seems to have been done. The next one, and written notice of the hearing shall be mailed by the commission to all owners and occupants of such properties. That, my clients never received any notice whatsoever. Um, they were not living in the town, however, their address was known. They've been getting tax bills, they've been paying the tax bills. So the town obviously knew where they were, but they received no notice whatsoever. No notice of what? No notice that there was going to be a hearing, no notice that there was going to be a designation. As, as to what? I don't understand what you're stating to you. I mean, what were we supposed to give them a notice of? I guess that's what I'm trying to say. The hearing. The mm -hmm. hearing for what? All right, let's go back. Give me one second. Let me find where it is in here. Because it's my understanding that is not historic. It's just commercial. So, if it's just commercial, why have they been told that they can't make changes to the property? Who told them that? Apparently, Mr. Mayor and okay. Fire Marshal. Okay. So, basically, what I was saying was that, you know, making structural changes or repairs had to have an inspection by the uh, building inspector that the city has hired to build the building inspector. It's nothing to do with it being horse stores or anything like that or or even changing the, the occupancy. It's just that if you make improvements or repairs that uh, that require an inspection, which I believe that does because it says anything on the exterior, or, you know, windows, uh, that sort of thing requires a permit. Where is the ordinance for that? Can you tell that, me the number? That is the state ordinance. The state ordinance, yeah. okay. Do you know what the, the site is? It's just the building code. Building it's code. the building okay. code. Okay. They are asking that they be allowed to live in the property, like they were able to live in the property when they were here before. They'd be allowed to keep their animals there, like they were allowed to do before... Um, they moved and came back. Um, they just want this to be their home. It was their home when they left. They want it to be their home again. Um, they got married in this town. This town hasn't always been their home, but it is their home now. They got married in this town. They love this town. They want to be a part of it. They want to live here. They want to be able to use the property for what it was intended. They want to be able to use the property um, as they were able to use it before. And they don't want to sue the city. But if they have to, they will bring up a lawsuit and do everything they can to be allowed to live on this property. Okay. So back in 2012, when the, they moved in, mm -hmm. uh, I don't even know who was doing building inspections, building codes, uh, zoning. Uh, but in... Uh, Last year, year Where's before. Where's the variance for that time? Um, we passed, you know, building codes, adopted the uh, state minimum codes and the state farm marshal's minimum codes. Okay? So, uh, we zoned that at that time. We had a public hearing. It was in the paper. Uh, as far as I know, nobody showed up. If I remember mm -hmm. correct. Not the first person. And we... Uh, we passed the uh, the ordinances for zoning. 
Now, the first thing, and you can come up here and get this copy here. You can come up here and get this copy. Uh, did Jeff, did you get a copy of this? Uh, uh, I think I do have that. Uh, uh, excuse me that it's not uh, clear. But I'm going to read you read this some codes and stuff, and that, that would be your... Uh, the hurdle. <clears throat> no such local government, governor authority shall have the authority to grant any waiver or grants which would excuse any building structure or proposed plans for buildings or structures for compliance with the fire state minimum co uh, safety codes uh, standards as adopted in the rules and regulations for uh, pursuit of this chapter. This is how the uh, state fire marshals uh, Code. Can you tell me what code section it is? It's uh, Title 25. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Okay. The second page is out of, out of the International Building Code. As you'll notice here, it talks about the required separation of occupancies. You go down the right hand side. Uh, if you look at the R and then go across and find mercantile, you'll see the fire separation that is required. One hour if it's sprinkled, two hours if it's non sprinkled. Where is this? It, okay. it, at the table 508.4. Five, five mm -hmm. If you go down the right column under residential, mm -hmm. then go over and find M for mercantile. I'm sorry, for M for mercantile. You'll notice that the first one is S, which means sprinkled. NS means non-sprinkled. So if it's sprinkled, you need a one hour. If non-sprinkled, you would need two hour fire separation from the living quarters uh, and the business. <clears throat> the state code also says any occupancy that changes, uh, changes to the occupancy uh, will be considered a new uh, building and would have to conform to those uh, codes. The third is out of the uh, International Building Code and it talks about the separation <laughs> and general uh, information there. <clears throat> so I have talked to the state fire marshal, our building official or building inspector, and the local fire marshal, or I'm, let me rephrase that, to the county fire marshal. And they all agree that it would have to follow the minimum fire safety codes of the state of Georgia. Hey, give me one second, please. And I, am, I did hear you correctly when you said that we as an entity, do not have any authority to override Correct. any of those Correct. requirements. Correct. And, that, and that's also to the building code also. All right. Um, because I am not seeing it. Can you point this out to me where you're talking about? About what? About where you go over and see Okay, so, so you are mm -hmm. right here. You go across and you see him right here. Okay. Right? So right there, S means sprinkle, which means it requires one hour to get sprinkled. Okay. If it's non sprinkle, it's two hours. And it's two hour firewall, which means four sheets of five eight sheet rock. Okay. Okay, and then one hour is one layer of five eighths on each side or two layers on one side. Okay. Okay, my qualification is I am the fire marshal of the city of Jasper. Okay, Tell us. so for that helps you understand. Yes, <laughs> it doesn't okay. help me understand, but right. it does help you understand. Right. So, um, <clears throat> um, looking at this eight two two seventeen, a total change in use or occupancy. Don't believe A applies because there hasn't been 
a change in the occupancy that would cause a greater hazard to the public? Uh, it's, a, it's a hazard to them. If you'll, if you'll read the last page that says group, um, You know, it talks about that, mixed use and stuff, uh, horizontal separation and stuff. I don't think it, uh, it, it, it pretty much, it says the separation are required between live and work units, uh, which is, that does not, this does not fall under that, but uh, uh, basically you, you're you wanting to turn the upper floor into a residence. Correct. Okay. So that is a, another occupancy because you're wanting to uh, live there permanently as a primary resident. Right, but that's right. what it's always been with a hotel. <clears throat> like it's been it's, vacant mm -hmm. for how long? Over a year, is that correct? Has it been vacant for over a year? We haven't physically lived there for 24 hours a day, yes. But it hasn't for been how vacant. long? We've had property there, we've been there. No, what I'm, what I'm saying is, is how long have you been moved away and went to uh, Steve's... We were in Jasper for approximately three years. Okay. It was less than that, but approximately. Okay. Mm. So, with that being said, uh, you know, some of the conditions for a variance would be a building and fire safety code compliance inspection. Uh, the chain link fence that is on the right of way of the road uh, would you, would you uh, mind, is that, you get into the conditions that yeah. the council might propose? Yeah. Just let them, if you would, okay. just let them finish the public hearing. Okay. And then you would go into your proposal for conditions. Okay. Let them, right. Just let them talk. Okay. Um, this 182217, um, when the proposed uses of equal or lesser hazard is determined by an authorized enforcement authority, which I, I would imagine may be the fire marshal, further compliance with any code for new construction is not required. Now, this building has been around for how many years? Lots of 140. And um, they're not asking to change anything. They're asking just to be allowed to live in this house the way it is. They're not asking, um, don't believe it, it's going to come under any new requirements. And any proposed change to the existing building and the, or the contents shall not increase the fire hazard to adjacent buildings or structures. They're not trying to even change anything. There's nothing that could cause a fire hazard to adjacent buildings um, just based on the fact that they're there. Okay. And it would also, uh, one of the things that, that, that they believe is it was also help provide security for the area because at least somebody's there 24-7. Instead of just having a district that's commercial only and nobody living there. It's my understanding that uh, the couple that lives in the house down the street are there off and on, but they're not there all the time. Which house? I think it's a couple of doors down. Holly yeah. Holly the white, The white one. The, the hotel, yeah. They don't live there. They only stay there on the weekends. Right, they come or there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's a different scenario entirely. They're not cooking, they're not, you know, they're not washing clothes. It's totally a different scenario there. Well, that's why I'm saying if they were there, if they were there full time, it would provide more security to the area because security nobody's down Security is not there. an issue to me anyway. We're not sure we quite understand how you expect firewalls to be put into this building, being an historic building. Well, now you just said it wasn't historical. No, no, you said it. Uh, we said it was not zoned historical. historical. We just got through putting firewalls in here. It and can be done. Rebuilt the building, basically. No, we did not. Mm, okay. So if they can put firewalls in, they can set. 
Well, no? no, there's yeah, y'all haven't gotten to that point yet. Yeah, yeah, no, we're just y'all making your presentation. It's, it's, really, <laughs> it's, it's very confusing to us. Yeah. Um, we had a contractor who was trying to make simple repairs to our building. Mr. Mayor, you came down the street. Cease and desist, cease and desist. We're making simple repairs that needed to happen to the building. And then our repair, our, our contractor was out there continuing to work. Nothing, cease and desist came to us on paper, so we waited, nothing came. Then you came and told our contractor, stop work order. Again, there was nothing that came. He said, wait, let me go and get Mr. Lewis. You can talk to Mr. Lewis. And you said, no, don't want to talk to him. No, I did not. I only went one time down there. No, you've been down more than once, sir. Oh, one time. So, anyway, and anyway, that's... It's just, we that. just don't understand... What they're doing wrong. What we're doing wrong. Yeah. Right. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak in support of the application? to want time for rebuttal, I presume? Yes. Is there anybody that wishes to speak uh, against the application? Anybody that otherwise wants to speak on this topic at all? <clears throat> okay. I'd personally like to say I am a resident of Talking Rock, and I would like to see them get their variants, so I'd like to see uh, something that they can do within reason to keep their property and to live on their property. I um, totally agree. I'm the same way, Randy. I'd like to see the people keep the property and live on it. And mention the if we need security in, on Main Street, and the Lewis would pro provide security up and down Main Street, because as you know in the past, we've had vandalism and theft and they would be a big asset to protect the town. So I think the, I really would like to see the experience of food. <clears throat> also, it may be interesting to note that the uh, volunteer fireman came to me and said, in as much as you're living here full time now, we would like you to be a backup in case there is a fire in the city hall or the fire station. So they gave me the code access for the garage doors and I was checked out on operating the fire trucks. My task is in the event of any emergency down here, I am to take the fire trucks out of the building and park them across the street. There's a half a million dollars worth of fire equipment in that this room back here that could be destroyed if nobody's around to take that out and provide that level of protection for the city. We have fully supported and fully participated in everything going on in this town. And to not be allowed to live here would not look good, not be good for us, but I don't think it would be that good for the town. Anybody else wish to speak? Close the public hearing portion and y'all can discuss and vote. Now, do we not make do that in regular, regular council meeting or? Up to you. Okay. Okay, uh, we close this uh, public hearing.